Hello everybody, Driven by Mars 9 team is out and it brings support for a new device, namely the Electra One. The support is for both Bitwig Studio as well as Cocos Reaper, but as usual I show how you can use it with Bitwig, but it's basically the same user interface as well with the Reaper version and for the differences between Bitwig and Reaper, please refer to the Driven by Moss manual. So Driven by Moss, if you never have heard about it, it's totally free extension for both Bitwig and Reaper and it supports plenty of controllers. And now here, this really nice Electra One is among the supported devices as well. So what is this Electra One device? It comes from a small company located in the Czech Republic and it's a really nice and sturdy device, a bit on a posh size here. The casing, I think, is plastic, but it feels quite a bit like metal, but the knobs are definitely metal and they are very, very sturdy. There's no movement at all and that really, really feels good. Let's have a look here at the connections on the back. So you have your connector to your PC or Mac or Linux system. And there's also here the possibility to host other USB devices. And there's two MIDI ins and two MIDI outs as well. So the main intention of this device was in the beginning to control your hardware hardware synthesizers. For example, here I loaded a patch to control the Novation Peak or Summit. And for that, it has really some nice interfaces where you can also show here some graphics for waveforms, for example. And the basic concept is of that you have 12 knobs to control this user interface. This is a touch screen, so you can touch here also the items to select something. You can also do some long touching to do some fine tuning or then simply use the knobs for the selected row. So you have three rows, which you can either select here with the buttons or you can directly select it by touching into the touch screen. And then you can change here the according values of the parameters. As usual, people called out for more things, not only hardware synthesizers. Pretty soon afterwards, there came the support for software synthesizers as well. And now there is also the support for DAWs, in our case here, Bitwig and Reaper. But before we dive into that, I should also mention this week was the announcement for the Mark II. It's basically the same device in the same casing, but it has a faster processor and brings you more memory because it also got extended with, for example, some scripting functionality. So you can script, write extensive mapping scripts, for example, in Lua. And also for the new version, there is the idea that you can also use this here, for example, for media transformation that you can modify incoming midis or add nodes or stuff like that and this needs more memory and as you see i filled up here three banks of different presets and my memory is here nearly full so you see it here in this little image here at the bottom you see that it's uh, yeah nearly full so how do you change these presets you keep that button pressed and then you press the other one and there you see i loaded up three banks with patches for different devices and the other ones are empty. So it depends on the size of your patch, how much you can load into the device. And as I said, with the new version, you can do plenty more presets. You have six banks up with 12 different presets, which you can load. And each preset also have different pages. For example, here for the repro, if I just press that button, I get the different pages here and I can select them. But we want to look into Bitwig support. So one thing first to note is you should have at least the firmware 3.0.5, which currently when I do this video is in the beta version available so you need to download it from the beta side of the Electra One page but maybe it will be already published when I will release this video. Currently there is issue with MIDI system exclusive commands on the Linux version of Bitwig. This is still the case in 446 but there should also be a bug fix for that. So also check Bitwig. I hope this will also get released soon and make sure you have, I don't know the number, but I guess it will be 447 that you need to make this work on your Linux system.
Let's fire up Bitwig and go to the settings and to the controllers and the Electro One should be auto detected as well. Maybe you need to click here on edit especially or if it's if for some reason the naming is different or do you connected it to a different port, you might need to edit manually. There is also here in adding controller, there is Electra and Electra One and then you click on add and also have it added to your setup. What you also need to do is to install the Driven by MOS preset into the device. You do that via the user interface on the website as well. So the same way as you install other presets and you can find it if you download Driven by MOS, you will find this resources folder. And in the resources folder, there's now also a folder for Electra One. And there you find the preset or the project, how it is called here, for Driven by MOS. And you simply import that on the website website and install it to any slot you like. So for example, as you see, I put it here on a slot number 12 of the first bank, but you can store it anywhere you like. It will get auto detected on startup and directly will be also selected when Bitwig starts up. But let's start with a transport view, which also contains several global commands. And I loaded up a sketch of a song, which will be on my next album of my Mossifier project. Yeah, let's start playing. And what you directly see in the center, there is a marker section and I created two markers, one for verse and chorus. So let's jump to the chorus and the cursor moves to the chorus and here it moves to the verse. You can also enable this launch button, which will then mean if I go to the chorus, it means it will also launch playback from that marker and same for the verse. You can add several more. So if you go anywhere here in the project, let's just move the cursor a little bit to that and then say, let's add here one and you get a new one then add it. You can see here up to eight markers, but you have a page navigation so you can have as many markers as you like. In the lower part, you already see we had here the play and record and also you can move the play cursor as well. Sadly, there is currently no support for relative knobs, which will be there in a hopefully not too far in the future update that we have also support for relative knobs. So currently they are absolute. So I had to do this with buttons for the time being, but I'm pretty sure we can soon have also here control for the play cursor on a knob. If we go more to the left, there are global commands like undo and redo. We can also enable the click and you can change with a knob here the volume of the click. You can turn on and off the arranger overdub and you can control also the tempo. So you can go down in steps of one, go up in steps of one, but as well, you can tap the tempo. You can undo that as well and redo that too. We are left here with the upper part. So the upper part has some clip control. So you can create a new clip for to show that. Maybe let's go to this other project and enable that. And there you can say we want to have a new clip and you get then the new clip with playback and you can stop that as well. But you can also go into another empty clip and say you want to record and then you can record a new clip. And if you press it again, it will stop the clip recording too. Here we can switch the overdub on and off and here you can quantize your recorded clip. In the center here on the top, there is the automation section. So you can enable a range of automation recording as well as clip automation recording and you can select the different modes like write, latch or touch, whichever you prefer. So much for the transport page. Let's go back to the first one to the mixer page. And therefore let's go back here to my here and there song. Here you can see we have volume, panorama and some properties here. Like we can say record arm, mute, solo and select. So let's for example, select the first one. Second one, you can go to playback. Say you want to solo the drums here or you want to mute the drums. And as I said here, you can also enable recording. You can change the volume on the top 
and you can also change the panorama. Moving on to the next one. So here we have the sands. You have up to six sands on one page. So for the five tracks, you have six sands. And I forgot to mention, so here's the bank navigation, which is also on the first page. So here you can also move forward to the other tracks as well and the other pages, including the sands and also including the master channel here. Let's go back to the first one and then select the sense. So we I only have here one sense channel, so you can change the volume of the sense channel. And I use also the color of the source track for coloring the sense. So you have a little bit of your orientation where you are in your project. So moving on already to the next one is the devices page. And for that, let's go back to the empty project. And here we have a policy, and so we will see some things happening. On the top, you see the eight parameters of the currently selected page. So you will see we have here our oscillator pitch, we have here a shape, and you see the same things here in between the colored ones are the ones currently we have here selected. Oh, this could also be an idea that I use the colors of the Bitwig colors here. Would be a nice touch maybe to have them as well here for the parameters. So currently they're only in one color. So maybe, yeah, tell me about it if you like to see the different colors down in the comments. Okay, what else can you do? You can disable the, the device as well. You can turn it on again. And if the device has a window, you can toggle the window as well. And here you can select the different parameter pages so you can move to the common page, oscillator to and so on. If there are more than eight parameter pages, you can also change them here with up and down. On, on the right, there are some other features. So you can pin the device, which pins not only the device, but also the track. Pinning basically means you can, with other controllers, go somewhere else or also in Bitwig, go somewhere else. For example, if I click down here, it will still focus on our policy and on the second track. If I unpin it, it will jump down here to the newly selected MPC track, which contains here such a hardware instrument. The other one is a little gimmick here for the user interface. You can expand or hide the device. And last one is if you have several devices on the track, which is normally the case, you can also select the different devices and you can also go to a 9th or 10th and so on device on your track. Another new gimmick is the equalizer page. So you will have directly access to an equalizer on each track. If there is no equalizer yet, so here in Bitwig, the EQ Plus is used. You can click here on Add Device. And if the EQ Plus is on the track, you can disable it here with the on off as usual. The main controls are here in the center and you have up to six bands of this EQ, which you can control at once. So you can enable a band, which is also a shortcut for selecting the bell type of the equalizer. But you can also select different ones. You can also do that here with the knob. So we have the different type options. So starting from the left, a low cut, the low shelf, and you have the bell and a high cut and a high shelf as well as a band pass. And I try to draw some nice little curves so you can easier identify what's going on. For example, let's go here to a low cut and then you can adjust here the frequency of the low cut. You can also add a bell here on the second one and then also move the frequency, change the gain of it and change here the quality factors. You can dial in the sound you like. And as I said, it's up to six, which you can control from that few. That's already it, what you can do. I think the, the focus is a little bit here for really for devices, which is really nice to control it. I'm not sure if it makes sense to add something like sessions. So I also like to hear your feedback. What do you think? Do we want to have sessions as well? But before I leave you, there is one really cool feature. I showed you before you have all these different other control devices or presets to control other devices. And this works also nicely for software plugins. So you can also use software plugins in controls created by other users, you can use them as well in combination here with the Bitwig or Reaper control. For example, let's add here something like a diva from Yuhi. 
You see, I did not map any remote controls to them. We could do that too. But what would be nicer to do is to use one of the pre-configured. So if I switch here, you see I have here the UE Diva. And this provides different parameters, which you first need to map as well. Diva has here this mapping page, for example, and you see I mapped already the most used ones, but you could basically map all of them. So you would once need to move with the knob. Also, this editor has two pages, so you have the LFO settings on a second one and uh, you could map them. I only mapped some of them and this is now really nice. I can now, for example, here change the cutoff. As you see, I can change here the emphasis, change the volume of the first one and the second and of the third oscillator as well and so on. So I can control the device from that view and you can simply go back to Driven by Moss and it will then go online again uh, with the door control. This is a really cool feature of this device. So you could also create your own controls and views for the plugins you use most of the time and can then make them much more individual also with attack decay envelopes as I showed in the beginning than your normal Bitwig control with the eight parameter pages. So I think this is a really nice, a solid controller with many, many functionalities. And I'm sure there is more to come, especially now with this Lua support. And there will be also this mapping functionality coming up in the near future. So this is a device with many, many options and pretty straight and streamlined user interface, very solidly built, but also not on a cheap side, but I think it's totally worth it in respect to the build quality and also keeping in mind that it's a small company who is building these things yeah, I'd like to hear your opinions on what you think about the device. Write me down in the comments below the video. And until next time, make some funky music.